Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. Really? Well, it depends on where you're at. I mean, it could be morning. I mean, this is international, so there are people that watch it all over the place. So for some of them, it okay. is morning. Huh? Okay. Don't be so judgmental, man. You know, you never, you never know. See, for Chris's afternoon. Yeah. See. How's What's it going up? this afternoon? How yeah. you guys doing? Monday. This is just crappy Monday. I was gonna do. Something. Happy Monday. I totally forgot what I was gonna do. Do you think it's Happy Monday? I mean, I'm sure for some people they just are cannot wait for Monday so they can get back to doing whatever it is they're doing. That's me. And, I can't wait until it's Monday. I, Monday is awesome. Is, is that what it is? No, it's not. I was gonna say. Hey, Eduardo, Peru. Oh, I know what I was gonna do. Stop. I'm like, I know there's something I'm forgetting. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. So, What's up, Chris? Oh, Mr. Bruce. I'm not gonna get caught up in that. Uh, ah, there we go. El what Finding the truth. What's up, El Fuego? What's going on, guys? <coughs> Pardon me if I cough Custom a few speaker times. Pods. What's up? What's up, man? How's it going? He texted oh. me this morning. Oh yeah? Yeah. Uh, uh, so, right now we're running a contest uh, over on Instagram, yeah. but it's 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 for anywhere. And it has to do with this, not that, this, this right here. Uh, MTI Acoustics at, on Instagram. And what we've asked you to do is go over to Instagram, take a screenshot that looks just like this, and then head over to this email address here, dnfchristmas at yahoo.com, and you get registered to win a stage one enclosure, be That's it right. for a truck or a car or anything like that. Now, we had initially said that we were going to do the drawing for it today on October 10th. However, when we said that, we really didn't think it through all that well and realized that we were gonna be gone for a week uh, in between mm -hmm. and I've, I've that, that kind of sucked because not everyone you know we, we didn't hit it as hard as we normally do when we do these giveaways so we're going to give you guys another week to enter mm -hmm. so if you haven't entered yet it's just go really my phone went to sleep yeah okay all right this is doing so well oh hey go here the MTI Acoustics. Let me shut that off so you can see. Go to MTI Acoustics. Take a screenshot. Looks just like this. And then Email send it, it to dnfchristmas at yahoo.com. And that's all that you have to do to be entered to win. Now, you can only enter once per Instagram account. Mm -hmm. So that's not once per email. I know in a lot of these, comp you, hey, you've got four emails. No, one email, one account. That's it. Like it. Done. That's that's all we got. So yeah, um, next Monday we will be doing the drawing. So if, if you're interested in winning this and it's open to anybody, uh, Johnny 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 wants to enter. Johnny can enter. Johnny can enter. That'd probably be everybody nice, can like, enter. Like if Johnny won, then they could. It's like in state. So, <laughs> but either way, that's right. Speaking of What's Texas, up? hello from Texas, where it's 85 degrees and very nice. Very nice. All right, sorry. Hi, Fro. Hi, what's Dave. up? Hi, Fro. What's going on? Um, so yeah, that's that's what's happening there. I apologize. Really wanted to be giving it away today, but we just didn't really think that would be fair because normally we give you guys plenty of time to enter these things. And we want to make sure everyone gets the opportunity to. And it's high from Norway. However, unfortunately, Norway is not eligible to win this because it is for continental U.S. Yeah. So I apologize Sorry. to you guys for that. But, but thank you, guys. But thank you guys for entering. Um, Ready? Yeah, and TI does make it really nice. They also make the rear speaker pods, too. Yes, they do. So, yeah. Anything? All right. Oh, what happened? Hold on. I got one more thing I need to do. Okay. Before, I, before we get deep into uh, questions, which you guys can start queuing up questions and getting those ready, we'll get to those. But, hey, we have this little thing that we do called the 12-volt clean wire club, and the 12-volt clean wire club is a place where you can go and post pictures of your clean wire. And every week, Fernando scours the page, 
and finds one. Now, what he did ask for, and, and I commend you guys, you guys did it, but you really didn't do it the way he was hoping for, is post your wire pics of your underneath hood stuff, but you managed to put it in one comment stream, and that made it really hard for him to go through and find pictures that he liked. So if you do want to post pictures of your under hood, please post them as a regular post so that they're searchable and easy to find. Um, but yes, keep posting those. But this week is not one of those. It is this guy right here. Let me turn this off for a second. Who do we have here? Uh, JD. JD Custom Shop. Okay. Yeah. So we got a, a Helix C4. Power on some Focal components. JD Audio Shop. I'm sorry. Thank JD you. Audio Shop. Very nice. Yeah. So very clean, very nice, very compact install. Looking very sexy. Yeah. So really nice. Good job. Good job. If you would like to have yours featured, by all means, just take a great picture and put it up there and life will be good. What's up, Bobby? What's up, Bobby? How are you doing? Good. Um, yeah, all right. Hold on, wait, wait. <laughs> John, Johnny's coming here. I can't enter, I'll just drive down to Chris's shop. And pick I it up? I haven't seen it in a new place yet. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, when wiring an epicenter and an amplifier, how do I power the epicenter? Just get power and ground from the amplifier. That would be the easiest way to do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely be the easiest way to do it. Uh, that, yep, easy enough. Uh, how would you compare Dyne Audio with Morel? Oh, you know, that's a funny question because back in the day, they were very similar and in fact shared some of the same. They kind of did one of these weird relationship things where some of the Dyne Audio and Morel stuff were interchangeable amongst themselves. They're very similar thought process. They both use oversized voice coils. Um, I think if you have to compare two speakers that are very similar, it'd probably be those two brands. So uh, Dyn Audio has not come down into like the realm that, that Morel has, meaning Morel makes affordable car audio speakers, whereas Dyn is strictly like, yeah, we got these speakers that we make for these really expensive home audio speakers. Yeah. And if you guys would like to buy them and put them in your car, pff, knock yourselves out. Oh boy. Um, so I think I think more thought process is, is, is going to market is where I'd say the biggest difference is. Y'all said this drawing was this Monday. And we were going to have it Monday, as I said at the beginning of the show. Um, but because we were gone for a week, we just didn't feel like there was enough time. And we didn't spend any time for a whole week talking about it. So we're going to postpone it one more week to give everyone the opportunity gonna that, give that you may have missed week. out because yeah. we weren't here all last week and to come back and do that just, it's kind of not fair to the people that are doing the, the giveaway for one. And also if anybody, you know, there was a week we didn't talk about it. So it's, it's, yeah. it was our fault. I apologize, but we are going to extend it out for one more week uh, just to make sure that anyone that wants to enter has the opportunity to do it. So that's that's it i apologize it's my bad my bad guys <clears throat> about to pull the trigger on a new alpine status three-way are you guys going to try some anytime soon that is a no we are not going to try some anytime soon um <clears throat> alpine makes great speakers there's no doubt about it the status is no exception to that i f you know they're they're building off of what would have been considered uh you know an x type which the x type always sound amazing um, this is obviously the evolution of the speaker, which means it sounds even better. Uh, however, Alpine really isn't in our... We don't sell a lot of Alpine speakers. Um, that, it's just, mainly just because we have so many other brands, but I would not be... I would not hesitate to buy some. Uh, if they'll fit in your car, go for it. They're going to be awesome. And let us know what you think of them. That would be wonderful, for sure. If, yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to hear how people... You know, once it gets out in the field, what people think of them. Of course. You know? Yeah. Carada systems are like chasing a high. My first system was a Pioneer in a bandpass box with LED lights, and I swear I never had the same feeling. I would agree with you on that. You are you are one hundred percent correct. It is always chasing that chasing that demon, as it were. You know, okay. think about how exciting it was that first time you cranked on your first system. You never had yeah. that feeling again. If you want your no, I, I, I definitely right? have more I know. I, I think I'm gonna disagree. No, you're you can disagree. That's the great I thing. I totally disagree I mean, because you're going to as suck soon as, because you're not on my team. Of course, you know, you have and to I don't care. No. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you, when I had my first my first subwoofer that was a bazooka, 
1992 Acura Integra. And I was like, oh my God, this is the best. That was an eight inch and that was the best. And then I changed it for the 212s and I'm like, oh my God, this is the best. And go on and on and on. And now right now I'm running a 430 Moscone amplifier and I'm like, mm. so for me, every time you change something, it's, it's, it's a new high. It's, it's a new high, of course. Well, it's the go. high. And that's what I like about it. It's two perspectives yeah. on the same topic. Uh, what's the best way to run eight speakers in my Scion TC without a DSP? Or is that the best way? Um, I think you're asking two questions there. Uh, DSP doesn't mean that's the best way to run eight speakers. It's how are you going to power those eight speakers, I guess would be the better question. And, or or what, what speakers are they? So for example, if it's just like two sets of components, meaning four tweeters, four mid bass, any four channel amplifier is going to do the job if you're going to go passive. Now, if you want to go active, meaning you want to get rid of the passive crossovers, then you're going to want to look at, you know, an eight channel amplifier. Most eight channel amplifiers are going to come with DSPs. However, Kicker does make eight channel amplifiers in the marine lineup, and they also make six channel amplifiers in the marine lineup. So it really just depends on what you're trying to do. Now, the other thing you have to keep in mind is how are you going to actively cross these speaker over? And that's the other part of the question is so for example if it is for two sets of components you have two tweeters up front two tweeters in the back two mid-range in the front two mid-range in the back you're going to go passive crossovers those are going to cross everything over any four channel amp will do the job if you're going to go eight channels hopefully the eight channel amp you buy would have some form of better crossovers built into them the kicker does uh, that will allow you to actively cross them over because most standard like four channel amplifiers don't have the ability to cross the tweeter over high enough, like they stop at like 220. So that's no good, because a tweeter usually has to be something like 3200, 4000, 5000, 2200. Um, so there, there's that to keep in mind. The nice thing about the DSP amplifier is the DSP amplifier will obviously give you the ability to do that in the sense that you just open up your laptop, type in the numbers and you're done. So that makes it somewhat less painful, but it really, it. it there is no right or wrong, it's just there is one way to do it, and that is power them up in the way that best fits the amount of speakers you have and figure out how you're going to actively cross or passively cross them over. So, yeah, what All else right. you got for me? I got, I got plenty. <laughs> uh, I'm installing my amp. What is the underhood fuse holder you guys use? That is a pack audio, or I'm sorry, Stinger. Stinger. Same company. Yeah. Stinger fuse holder. Stinger so. Electronics, you go to Stinger Electronics, or you can check Metra too. They they have uh, They don't have anything like the Stinger. Fuse That's holders? why we keep using that right. Stinger. Yeah. Distribution blocks, Metra. Under yeah. fuse holder, Stinger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what other ones they make? No, that's all that's we use. It. We yeah. just use the stinger. Well, we use that. <laughs> it's hey man, I just the one you it. like, I'm you sorry. know, so that's the one we keep <laughs> going with, you know. All right, next. Uh why does my highs go Away. away when I turn up my amp. Ooh, wow, that's a good question. There's a couple things that could be going on with this one. Um, if there is a passive crossover in in line, so for example, let's say you have a, a tweeter in a mid range, and there's a passive crossover there. Some passive crossovers have a a shunt in them, uh, which is the best way to think of it, and that when too much DC or distortion gets through that it will, because sound is AC, so that's why the same DC gets through, it will absorb that and lower the volume in order to keep you from blowing the speakers, okay? So like Kicker has that, where if it gets too high, the tweeter will automatically shut down until you turn the volume down, then it'll pop back on. What that's telling you is that you're trying to get too much out of the amplifier you've chose. Not that the speaker can't handle the power, the speaker can handle the power. What it can't handle is the distortion or DC current that you're passing through to it. Um, so in, th in this case, you'd need a bigger amplifier. Uh, now, if you're hooked up to a factory radio and it's doing this, then it could just be the factory radio's loudness control is kicking in. And what happens is it automatically just stops getting brighter. Um, but yeah, those are two situations that can cause that. All right. <clears throat> If you had to pick from RCA, if you had to pick RCA out from a Helix V12 to an ACM 4.300 bridged 
for mid bass on the doors or the LC 1.800 for sub. What would you choose? DSP for sub or not? Uh, I'm not gonna worry about the DSP for the sub. Like if I'm if I'm struggling for channels, the sub goes out the window. Uh, I'm not gonna use it. Uh, if I'm competing and I'm worried about, or I'm really, really, really picky and I want to get up front bass, which means I want the subwoofer volume to be attenuated to match the other speakers, and I'm not gonna be playing it, you know, constantly riding the volume knob on it to like bang the back of my head off, then I'm getting, I don't have to worry about the, the DSP for the subwoofer. However, if I want that feature, then I would do that. Now, with the Helix, I would not care about it so much because I think the effects you can do for the rear speakers are pretty cool. So I would probably want that more than I would want uh, to worry about what my sub is doing because I'm just going to crank it up and beat the crap out of things. All right. What would you say 2K would be a good place to start upgrading the electrical system, alternator, etc.? Um, now, if you mean a total of 2K, 2,000 watts, not necessarily. Uh, if you're talking about like a 2K amplifier, like a one 2,000 watt amp and then adding other amps to it, probably. Um, you know, when you're looking at a high amp and then let's say a sub amp. Uh, so, you know, let's let's pull up the uh, let's the pull up the next sponsor here just to have some fun with it. And that'd be audio control. So let's talk about. So let's say I buy an, a D 4800, mm -hmm. which is 800 watts. Uh, we'll buy a oh, better yet. We'll buy a D 6 1200. And then we'll buy an LC 1.800. That'll put us right at 2K. Okay. Okay, so we got 1,200 watts for the highs, 800 watts for the subs. Puts mm -hmm. us right at 2K. Majority of the cars that we've ever put that in, actually pretty much all the cars we've ever put that in, with the exception of maybe a Mustang, because mm -hmm. they, I don't know what it is about Mustang guys. They always love batteries in the trunk. Um, I think it's a racing thing. Uh, you, you really don't need a second battery for that. If you're, you know, you're on zero gauge... Um, you're not really going to be using 1,200 watts out of that high amp. It's just not going to do it because two of the channels are going to power tweeters, maybe two of the channels are power mid-range, possibly mid-bass. Um, it's just not going to be drawing that full 1,200 watts of amperage that you'd think it would. The 800 watt amp definitely is going to. So in the end, it, it, it typically runs fine, like F-150s. That's like our go-to system for a ton of F-150s. So it, it just depends what you're doing with the 2,000 watt amp. Now, when we put a 2,000 watt amp in a car, and that or a vehicle, we'll call it a vehicle, and then we add, let's say, a high amp to it. Oh no, we're we're strongly recommending adding a second battery because you know that 2,000 watt amp is typically powering like let's say four subwoofers, and they're buying it for the sole purpose to bang the back of their head just. Yeah. Oh, so wow. just like that, huh? Gotta have power. Gotta have power. All right. All right. Wow, I have a 2020 Ram Crew Cab, and I would like to add just a little bass. What would Don't you guys suggest? suggest? Um, Crew Cab. That's a that's a four door still, right? Mm -hmm. Um, probably like a ten. You know, nice mm -hmm. nice ten. Uh, okay, so if it doesn't have the premium audio system, which I'm guessing it doesn't, because if you had the premium audio, you're probably okay. So what I'd probably do in this. Like if somebody walked over to me and says, I just, like if you came in and I just want, I, I would see if I could fit like, Kicker makes a nice little wedge box, the Comp RT wedge, mm -hmm. and they also make an L7T wedge uh, that will slide right up under the middle of the seat. And then I go with something like a key uh, 500.1 because it's going to have the DEQ circuit in it that that truck desperately needs. Uh, if it's an Alpine or a premium audio system, in which case then no, I would do a, an amp, uh, a sub pro. But if you just have the base model audio, you really can't do a sub pro because you need the radio to power all the other speakers. Right. So, but you could do a five channel amp and a sub pro, which would be way better. Now, if you're going to do that, then you could just you know do an amp pro, mm -hmm. five channel amp, re reamplify everything, and yeah, Good to okay. Go. So either way, the all first right. option is probably the easiest one. Uh, have you heard anything on the arrival of the Kicker Solo Axis? Man, they don't tell us shit either. And in, <laughs> honestly, if they did, we couldn't tell you anyways, because we can. We signed a piece of paper that says we can get in trouble. I mean, right. you know, ow, quit. Uh, Morel are ten percent off at Crutchfield. Put the hybrids on the list for my upcoming birthday next month, unless Fernando is ready to part that with his. <laughs> Just keep it in your list, buddy. <laughs> Just give it in your card. <laughs> um, 
Happy birthday, by the way. Um, I have a three-way. This one. Down. Okay. Okay. I have a three-way front and component rear fill running passive off the DMA-10. How should I tune my system? Should I switch the rear for coaxials? What crossover settings should I use for my front and rears? I have a three-way, I have a three-way front and component rear fill running all passive. So it sounds like to me you just have a uh, front rear sub, but you have a bunch of passive crossovers in there. Um, if you're running passives, more than likely you're going to just, you know, set the channels to 80 hertz, you know, high pass on those, if that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're three. Yeah. 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 So uh, maybe the rear is somewhere up around 110 if you feel like they're, they're, they're you know, not doing it. Um, the rear, the real shame to this would be what you should probably not worry so much about what you're going to get this to sound like in a passive configuration because you're really selling yourself short on this one. What you want to eventually do is get a bigger, like a six channel amp for the front so that you can go full active and then possibly just use the amp to power the rear. Passive <laughs> rears are fine, yeah. but when you have a three-way front stage, man, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with it. This Mustang sitting yeah. over here is getting the exact same thing you're talking about. Uh -huh. We didn't design it, he did. So this is what he wanted to do. So it's not like it's it's bad, but you got a DM810. You got a big ass DSP. Um, take advantage of it, man. Yeah. You know, and you don't need big power. A lot of people get like, oh my god, I gotta go buy this. You know, no, no. I mean, ACM amplifiers, uh, LC61200, um, anything. Yeah. You know, just. I mean, that's just, a big amplifier. <laughs> I know, but. All right. Um, I'm a huge fan from you guys from the Caribbean. Thank you, man. Second question is... If I want a custom subwoofer box built by you guys, is that possible? No. No, it's not. Unfortunately, we don't build boxes. Um, that's a decision that Paul came to a while back uh, as far as just time frame and whatnot, and building boxes was something that he didn't want any part of doing anymore. So we freelance all that work out. It's just it's just the business model, man. A lot of people, a lot of people don't always understand that, but a lot of shops are moving towards that, and he's on the forefront of wanting to do that. He just doesn't doesn't want to deal with it. Hold on, before you hold that one, I, I, I want to. I like Mel. Mel says, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I'm drilling at the kicker cell X setups. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You can't do that. You can totally do it, Mel. All I right. know a guy. All right, Sorry, I was gonna say, 2020 Ram 2500 without premium, just need Amp Pro version two to add amp and new door speakers that have the ANC cancel. Without premium, just need an Amp Pro version two to add amp and new door speakers that have the ANC cancel. Okay, so something to keep in mind here, if you have a non-premium audio system and you buy the Amp Pro version two, the version two is going to reprogram the radio to think it's an Alpine or whatever yeah, or other, an amp a premium an audio system. Yeah. Uh, that means that you can't use the radio power for anything. That is also going to negate the ANC because at this point now you're just going to be coming out of the amp pro going directly into outboard amplifiers. So it's going to come from radio, amp pro, speakers. Uh, Sorry, Amp Pro amplifier speakers. So you don't have to worry about ANC because you're not gonna be using anything in the vehicle. Uh, if it is a 2500 and you'd like to bypass the ANC, it is either located underneath the driver's seat or it's located up underneath the, up above the, where the factory amplifier would be um, uh, by the brake pedal area. So those mm -hmm. 2500s are in either place, but you really don't have to worry about them. Uh, they do make the ANC bypass harness as standalone for those vehicles, which does is kind of nice, but you know, not totally necessary. Um, but yeah, now keep in mind though, when you do that, you have to amplify amplify every speaker in the vehicle. The radio cannot be used to do anything. Why do you recommend? Who to, do you recommend oh, re to build the box? Right there. <laughs> I was going to say, right now we happen to have a partner program that we're doing with this particular company 
uh, MTI Acoustics at mtiacoustics.com or .net. .net. Um, and if you follow their page on Instagram, you could possibly win a free box. But depending on the type of car you have, there are plenty of places that do build boxes out there. Um, a trend, uh, Zen enclosures, mm -hmm. um, Fox Acoustics. Fox Acoustics, yeah. It's plenty. Uh, um, you, you will find plenty. All right. And then um, we do have one here in Florida uh, called SRQ Customs. SRQ. But also, if, you, if you're in the mood for waiting, because they, they have a huge wait list. Uh, what's your favorite wireless Android Auto double din at the moment? I'm caught between the Kenwood and the ILX 507. One of those is not my favorite, and one <laughs> of those is my favorite. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you could probably guess which one is my favorite, and that's not to knock the other, like if it ended in a nine or it ended in 11, like the nine is awesome, the 11 is like crazy. The nine, I like the nine, I'm a big fan of the nine. Um, but the seven, not so much. Um, I don't know, we just, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Does a pass across order from the component set work the same on a different brand of speakers? Ooh. So using a pass across over to another <clears throat> speaker? So I think what they're saying is, let's say you had some Morels and you wanted to change out to Focal. Should you change out the pass across over? Yeah. Yes. yes. The yes. answer is sure. yes. Now, keep in mind this. Um, Hold on. Or if you have, for example, the crossover and you want to put the speaker or vice versa, yeah. You... So, I'll even keep it in the same brand. Ow! Just be careful of it. Okay. All right. This is a passive crossover for JLC5. This is a passive crossover for JLC3. You can see they're substantially different here in totally size different. and makeup. Yeah. Um, when we pop the top and we look at the capacitors on the inside they're totally different meaning yeah. whatever this is using for this tweeter it is not using on this tweeter oh, yeah. it's okay. okay so and the coils totally different as well what we're getting at is when a manufacturer designs a passive crossover they know the speakers that they're going to be connecting up to and they design those for the characteristics of characteristics of the speaker meaning on axis off axis how far away it could possibly be, what the speaker sounds like in different crossover points. Do we need a 6 dB? Do we need a 12 dB? Should it be 18 dB? Uh, in polarity, out of polarity. These are all things that are done inside of the passive crossover. It's not a like afterthought. It's something that a lot of these manufacturers put a lot of thought into because they know that even though everyone is all gun ho to go active, Majority of the people still don't do it, and they don't want blown speakers, and they want their speakers to sound good, because you want to put those speakers in, hook them up to the magic box, turn it on, and it sounds good. If it sounds like crap, hmm, got a problem. So, the long and short of it is, if you buy speakers, use the crossovers that come with the speakers, don't mess around with that, because they're not going to be the same. It might not be. Uh, another example of that is like when you look at like a Focal tweeter, Focal tweeter 5000. Tucker death. A Morel tweeter 2800. So that's that's a huge wow. You're missing a lot of things. Uh, what time is it? Okay. Two 10 inch JL Audio 10W6, 600 watts. Yep. Looking at a kicker marine two channel amp that'll be. Two by six hundred watts at two ohm. Go mono amp or stay the course on my two channel marine amp. Uh, what you say? Okay, so I have looking to get the kicker two channel amp that'll be two by six hundred watts at two ohm. Okay, which is cool. Or go mono amp. <clears throat> stay in the course. Um, reality is it doesn't matter. 1200 watts is 1200 watts. What you'd want to look at is the efficiency of the two amplifiers, uh, you know, if that's a question. But both of those amplifiers are going to put out 1200 watts. Um, the mono amp may put out a tad more just because it's a kicker amp and mono amps, you know, they get all gun ho about that and they want their amps to put out a little bit more. But if the ohm load is the problem here and we want to make sure, you know, uh, stick with the two channel. It's, it's not... 
you know, one of them might be 1200, the other one might be 1300, and you're not going to hear 13, you're not going to hear 100 watts difference. So, um, if if the if the Marine app works for you, just do that one. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's no wrong answer here. It's just as long as the unload works out, you're good. Can OEM integration ever sound as good as an all aftermarket system? Yeah. Why can't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yes, it can. There's Okay, let's make it easy, because that's always an it, Let's say we do Amp Pro, we do Zen, we do a, uh, iData, AR, uh, one of those types of installs. We're getting a full preamp section. I mean, the only, in some cases, it's, it's eh. Now, let's say we can't integrate that way, so now we just need to go better DSP. So you get a DSP that has the de-equalization circuit built into it that can handle most of the stuff that the factory EQ is going to be putting out so then you you just work the problem until it's just a longer road to get there um the other thing too is that you got to keep in mind what what is your intended listening environment meaning what, what are you going to be doing when are you going to be listening to this you know so uh, is the only time you're listening to this is like on your way to work in the morning possibly driving to the store you know just tooling around how much critical listening are you doing to where you're going to notice the difference between like this much floor noise and this much floor noise. Is that is that gonna be an issue for you? Some people it is. So, you know, that's where you have to look at it. But on the opposite side of that, I feel like the guy that, that decides he wants to upgrade his radio usually goes about that kind of half-assed a lot of the times and they don't go all the way. So it's like, you know, you're, you're gonna spend, let's say 500 bucks on a radio. Well. Okay, so I'm gonna get a cheap radio for 500 bucks, uh, and it's gonna cost me, you know, another 500 bucks to put it in, more than likely, because everything's gonna need some form of a smart harness. I got a thousand bucks. If I just get a DSP and possibly an integration, I'm at about the same amount of money, uh, or I just get a better DSP and tune it. So, I mean, you're, you're spending all the same money. It's just, I, I don't know, it's a tough one. I mean, it, you, you know, you have to be a right column shopper if you want everything to be awesome, which means buy the most expensive crap. Um, so who makes a killer three-way set that fits in a 2020 Ram and uses a 6x9 mid-bass? Audio Frog seems to be the best I've found. 2022, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Hey, that's a nice one. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to give you the 6x9. Yeah, if, I mean, yeah. if you want the 6x9, that's definitely the way to do it. Yep, um, that's, 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 that's awesome. Now, if you're going to go active, if you're going to go active, which I assume you are because you're looking at the audio frog. Then you can actually make a Morel set. Because if you think about it, you could do a set of the uh, the twos. The MM2. MM2. Mm -hmm. And then you could do a set of the uh, Ultras. Is it the Ultras? The, the Virtus. No, no, no. Six by nine. They only make one six by nine co component. It's not a Virtus. It's like a Ultra or something. I hate their names. Love their brand. Hate their names. Yeah. But anyways, you could actually build one with a Morel set if you're going to go full active, if you want it. Yeah. Uh, the only, well, you know what? I say that, but then the 6x9 isn't going to fit. Strike all that conversation. 6x9 won't fit. Never mind. Nope. You're right. Audio Frog. Yeah. All right. So. Oh. Oh. Audison. Check Audison, because Audison also makes a 6x9 in the Prima line, because they make a, a mid-range and a tweeter. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to talk you out of Audio Frog because we've oh. done it. It sounds great. But if you're just like looking for an alternative, the only other brand would be the Audison Prima. They make a 6x9 too. Yeah. But you buy everything out of the cart. All just right. like Audio Frog. Sorry. Question. I have a Honda Civic with a factory EQ. I can disable it in the hedge unit via the developer settings, but it doesn't save, right? Do you guys have any experience with this? No, but no, it never saves. Yeah, it kind of sucks, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know why they do that. I think they just don't like people playing with their stuff. Sorry. Uh, Help. I have a 2005 Chevy Crew Cab with three kicker com comp RT12 shallow dual voice coil to them. Can the audio control LC1500 handle a 1.3 ohm load? No, no, it's not a one ohm amplifier. It's, it's two ohm amplifier. Yeah. 
yeah, it won't like that. I'm not saying it won't do it. It probably will, but don't do it because it won't work. It won't, it won't last. It's not made to handle that, especially on subwoofers. They just don't like that. Uh, front doors in my car OEM are three-way. However, the tweeter and the woofer are on one channel. Yes. I also have three OEM mid-range or whatnot in the dash. One on each corner of the dash, windshield, and center. Suggestions. Um, for what? Speakers? I mean, if you're just looking for speakers, there's a ton of speakers to choose from. I mean... Uh, I will say this, uh, when, when it comes to like small mid-range and whatnot, the two that we typically go with are going to be the Focal Flax and then the Max Maximus set? Maximus. The mm -hmm. Maximus set from Morel on the opposite side of the coin. Uh, Morel makes a lot of small mid-range drivers and also the Flax mid-range in that set is super small and fits in a lot of applications. You can also, you can buy a lot of the Morels a la carte and you can buy the Focals a la carte as well. Uh, and then earlier someone had mentioned Audio Frog as a great alternative as well. So uh, there's, there's three brands right there that you can kind of thumb through their websites. What's up? What's up? What's happening? Tempo Ultras, see? Tempo Ultras, thank you. I know, right? It's, I hate their name. Why do they got to do this to me? Hey, one of the things that's coming up here shortly up, is Liz? the new subwoofers from Focal. That's mm -hmm. right, we got them in the other day, and we're going to be playing with them really soon to make a new shallow woofer mm -hmm. and a new regular depth woofer, um, both in the same line. I believe power hand is like 250 watts, but hopefully this Saturday we'll have, uh, we'll have them out on the bench, and we can take a look at them. Uh, here on the show, so stay tuned to Saturday when we'll play with them. If you'd like to get a precursor and how they look, head over to Focal-America.com. That's right. Using the ACR3 for system volume control on a DMA10. Should I keep the Pioneer head unit volume all the way up and use the knob, or should I use both? Uh, not all the way up on the Pioneer, because the Pioneer actually doesn't play all the way up, it'll clip. It usually clips somewhere around 38. Between 37 and 38 is about where that clips. So you can set the volume to that point and then use that to control the main volume. So yes, that would be how you would do that. Set it to the loudest point that you can before it distorts and then control your volume from that. Perfect. Do you guys do any internship for anyone who's into car audio and wants to learn from the best? Unfortunately, no. Um, yeah, it's not our store, so we're kind of our hands are kind of tied by the ownership, as it were. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm sorry. However, However, if you're interested, there is the Installers Institute mm -hmm. that is an accredited college here in Florida in Daytona Beach. It's owned by Metra. Uh, I believe they have, uh, you can check it out. They do have, uh, I think there's a short course and a long course. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're looking to get into installation professionally and you wanna be serious about it, nothing says I'm serious like a piece of paper that says I've graduated. And they also help you to find a shop. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. They, so I, most people don't even know that the school exists, but but they it's exist. A, it exists. It's, real. it's the Installer Institute, and you will learn a ton of stuff there. Yep. Using factory head unit, if you use a smart harness like a Pack Amp Pro, do you still need a clipped signal? Oh, wait. Do you still get a clipped signal from the head unit? Okay. Using a factory head unit, if I use a smart harness like an Amp Pro, okay, do you still get a clipped signal from the factory head unit? Not that we have seen, no. 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 Um, they they kind of design them to where that they don't do that. Clean signal, yeah. Now, the one thing about the Amp Pro that I will say is that it has a dip switch on all of them to go either 4 volt or 5 volt uh -huh. because not all amplifiers slash DSPs can handle 5 volts of input. So they do give you that one option on there. The other thing, too, that you have to keep in mind when doing any form of interfacing like this to where you're attaching into the factory radio when I said earlier we're saying you want floor noise like this or floor noise like that there is going to be things like floor noise because 
the preamp section that is in the factory radio was only intended for the factory system. We are getting a full range unadulterated signal. I mean, we're getting all the notes, all the hertz uh, coming out of the signal, which is what we want. We're losing all the bass roll off, we're losing any nonsense that's put in there. However, that preamp section was really designed to go into a 15 to 25 watt amplifier. You're now going to be putting it on, let's say, 70 to 150 watt amplifier, and the Amp Pro really can't correct for all of these things or the device that you because it's it's just a matter of how it's built, and that's why the you know they said can we get a system close to aftermarket? And I said you yeah, get close, just depends what you're trying to do. So. I don't know if that helps you in any way, but there, I'm gonna just leave it there. It's not a bad thing, it's just sometimes you get these guys that are like, oh, you know, it's like, yeah, there, there's floor noise. It's like, yeah, it's there. It's You're, you're asking a crappy preamp to, to put out 10 times the amount of sound it did before. All right. I have a Kingwood Exelon connected to the Maestro unit. The unit has gone broken. The screen- Bonkers. Wrong, yeah, the screen was unresponsive. The hard buttons don't work, and the steering wheel controls don't work. How can I troubleshoot this? If it is the head unit the or the mice trail. Mesh. So here's what I would do first. I would pull the radio out, unplug power to everything, reset the maestro, there's a button on the side of the maestro, so. <coughs> Press and hold the reset button, disconnect the power, well, just, disconnect the power, yeah, and then press, press the button. And just keep pressing it. Plug everything back in. And then just let it go. And let it go. It should go like red, red, green, green, green. Mm -hmm. And then what you want to do is on the Kenwood, find if it has a master reset button and reset it. And if it doesn't, there is a master, there should be a reset button in the menu where you can reset all settings. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do that, it is going to erase everything. So if there's anything in the radio that you feel you need to keep, EQ settings, stuff like that, make sure you write it down, take a picture Pictures or anything like that. Yeah. The other thing to do <coughs> is if you do master reset on the radio, that's a good time to check to see if there's a software update. Mm -hmm. If the radio is over a year old, my guess is there probably is some form of a software update. Definitely want to do it. Yeah. Um, all right. Do you guys use capacitors on your tweeters for mids to protect when running active? No. We use DSPs. <laughs> we use DSPs. Well, of course um, it's active, but like, yeah. No, we don't. I'm not. A, no. no. Here's the thing. I never understood this. Okay, I get it. I get it. Why it's there? And there's been one time, one time, that that saved a guy's bacon. Yes. It wasn't. We didn't install it. Yeah. He installed it. And he put capacitors on all his stuff. Mm -hmm. and thank God he did, because when he hooked up his DSP, he didn't get any of the channels right at yeah. all. I, you know, it was one of those things where he wrote markers, and it might have been late. I don't know. Great guy. We helped him out. We got it all working. But it was like he thought one and two were tweeters. One and two, it was uh, tweeter and rear speaker, or uh, st everything was wrong. So he had like mid bass going to his tweeters. And so from that, he, I was like, dude, how, how are these things even playing? He's like, oh, I put caps on my tweeters. And I was like, oh, thank God, because he saved himself. Um, and my, you know, when we're doing something like that, we test everything as we're doing the installation. It's not to say we're always 100%, but we at least, we have protocols put in place to check a checks and balances because we do it every day. Um, so we don't worry about things like that. A bell. What's mm -hmm. up? So, if you're worried about it, by all means, do it, because yep. why not? Uh, but if you pay attention to what you're doing and check everything in the end, and if your DSP forgets memory, the tweeters are going to be the least of your problems, man, because that means that DSP just did some really bad, and that's way more expensive than a set of tweeters. So, but, you know, whatever works for you, it's okay. Yeah. All right. Uh... I know you're not a fan of Toyota OEM systems, but what is your opinion of keeping the JBL OEM head unit in a 2022 Tacoma and use the DSR-1 with it because I want to use a USB DAC, aux, DS, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that's fine. Like, we do that, we do that. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the one thing. We get a lot of Toyotas here in Florida that don't have the JBL system 
or they're older. But if I had a 2022, I would, yeah, DSR-1 all day long, for sure. Why not? But yeah, totally keep that. Uh, thank you guys. I'm having a fun time upgrading my Highlander audio system, um, and I'm not cutting any corners. Can't wait for my Terra amps anymore. I have seen you guys use it. Are they? Good? I never seen. Oh, you guys I never use seen it. you guys use it. No, we don't. We don't. We don't use that. But hey, we're, we're we glad sell, that you're doing what you're doing. We sell a ton of equipment, um, but, and that's just not one of them that we sell here. Uh, I think the reason why is because I believe over there he sells Sound Digital also, <laughs> which is very similar to the Terra amps um, as far as they're both Brazilian. So that's kind of what he sells for that. Have you played with the new Focal Slate Fiber speakers yet? I don't even think he's ordered those yet. I don't think he knows they exist. No, I, I think I, they did. I think he knows, I don't think he but knows, I don't man. know. No, I don't know either. No, not yet. They, I, I'm excited to. I, yeah. Dude, that pair that was playing at uh, Master Tech. Mm -hmm. Like, if you guys caught the Master Tech, which is up today, their trip there, that was a okay. Sarah at master uh, not master tech mobile solutions that pair of home speaker cabinets that they are they not this late fiber those were slate no. fibers they are they are you sure yeah they are they they were those I were they utopias. Are the utopias those were slate fibers man. no i'm telling no. those were slate fibers no. they were different no, i'm thinking they were slate fibers <laughs> no question i have an ac 61200 and an ac 1.800 with the base knob the base comes and goes whenever he wants no, that's normally what happened uh just to start a few months ago do you have any guess as to what's going on uh so the first question i want to ask is what audio control is it a d6 1200 and you use an acr3 because it yeah. doesn't say uh -huh. or is it or you have the acr2 or one and it's plugged into the lc 1.800 yeah uh, if it's the ACR3 and you have a, you know, do you have an LC or D? There's a lot of things. In the end, it's probably the bass knob. All right, but they used to start a few months ago. So yeah, it's probably apparently the bass that knob. was, yeah. That was it's either fine. the bass knob is, is, wore, is getting wore out or the cable went bad. You know, the cable could be tugged or rubbing or, it, or. I mean, it sounds to me like it's the D, like a D61200, and they're using the ACR3. Or oh, you don't think one of the subwoofers is, is like going out and then just like come back? Well, yeah, but see, the reason why I think that is because remember the ace, the three is infinite spin. That's why I don't ever use that one. Mm -hmm. I I go into the else the one point eight hundred with the one that has a stopping point that doesn't spin. All right, so I don't like that. If you want to check that, would you disconnect the remote and just play it like that? No remote. So just to see if you, you actually subwoofer, you amplifier, yeah, so everything are sure. fine. Yeah, just unplug and, it. Yes, just unplug it. And, and see what's going on? See what's going yeah, on. Yeah, turn it all the way up, unplug yeah. it, and see what happens. Because if you, it'll, uh, okay, so they're D. It's a D61200. Um, so, okay. you, so you're using the ACR3. My guess is it's probably the, the knob is bad. I, I'm not, I, again, there's nothing wrong with the ACR3. I prefer, I prefer going into the 1.800 and just, that I don't want master volume control. I don't want any of that changing presets nonsense because yeah. I, I just want bass. Just want bass. Um, but no, it could be bad. The nice thing is, it doesn't matter because it's an audio control. You can take it out, set it back. As long as you've had it installed, you got a hell of a warranty. <laughs> so give them a call. They'll get you. Give them a call. What brand or brands of sound deadening are recommended? My car is very tiny and need it badly. Um, we use a couple of different. It really just depends. I mean, yep. and right now there's a ton of it on the market. Yeah. Um, but so we use a lot of st a Stinger Roadkill. We use that. Yep. Um, we also use the Ground Zero door kit. Yep. Uh, which comes with a ton of stuff. So it comes with stuff for the door panel. It comes. With, it's a whole pack. It's a whole kit mm -hmm. just for the two front doors. That's why we grab that because it's an easy sell for Paul. Yeah. Uh, because he just like, oh, here's a two door kit. It does everything. Um, and then everything else just gets the roadkill stuff. Mm -hmm. And then uh, some stuff that we got sent to us, we, we, we have, we've played with in other applications, a sound shield. Uh, they also make foam rings for around the speakers. Yep. And then if you want like, like the most esoteric sound treatment you can get, which is the stuff that I got, um, is Resinex. 
Yep. From Nick Apicilla. Yeah. Uh, that that's like you know, wow. Another level. It's another yep. level. So, I can I guess the stuff you don't want to get is like the Amazon cheap crap, but because what you don't want to happen is the the butyl heat up and start to drip. That's kind of gross. Yeah. And the cheap stuff will do that. <clears throat> All right. So this is a question for you. Tacos or pizza? Pizza. Pizza? Always pizza. Oh, man. I mean, a taco pizza is fine, but no. <laughs> uh, it's always pizza. Tacos will never win. And I know you're fine with tacos. Oh, no. That's that's not even a question. Yeah, ta tacos, will, tacos will never win. Um, I'll just put this up. Yeah. Uh, Sting Electronics page, X Mat sound dampening. Um, so that's where the Stinger Roadkill stuff will be located. So, how come you guys don't use capacitors? I thought we covered that pretty intensely. Which capacitor? You mean like tweeter capacitors or like power capacitors? Give me a little bit more information on that one. If you're power talking about can. like power capacitors, spray paint cans with voltmeters because they're crap. Uh, they haven't made a good like capacitor in a long time. Most of them are like like 14 crap they're just crappy cap caps um as far as tweeter caps go i think we hammered that one home yes um so i don't know which which capacitor do you mean type it in quick uh i accidentally ran my auto control 1500 at one ohm for four months and it never shut off but hope i didn't do any damage it still worked right now well, you didn't do any damage if it didn't shut off you didn't do any damage <coughs> keep in mind man as long as the voltage is there yeah you're you're gonna be fine but that's the problem is that most of the time you get a 1500 watt amp you know it's like you're running it it's at the bare minimum yeah. all right oh wow no that's i have no idea not that i'm aware of all right. ow oh what age do you consider you're too old to still install car audio and once you feel your body is unable to squeeze under the dash, what do you do till you retire? Th thanks, thanks, really? This, this, <laughs> this is like the worst thing ever. This is the shit that keeps me up at night. Um, you know, honestly, I don't have a really great answer for this. This is a question that, of course, has, is, it plagues me daily. Um, that's why I, 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 I run and, and do as much extracurricular crap outside healthy, of here that I stuff. can, eat healthy, uh, because I'm trying to prolong the pain as much as I can. <laughs> um, you know, trying to stay flexible, trying to nimble yeah. as it is. You know, I know a lot of guys that are my age that do this and I don't know how the hell they do it because, um, yeah, it's, it's like they're, they're over there, you'd think they were 70 years old. Um, so I think it just comes down to how you plan on, you know, keeping yourself mobile and healthy. Uh, I mean, I, I guess I'll probably be doing this into my 60s. I mean, that's 10 years away. I mean, it seems to be the right. And what do I do after that? I have no idea. Yeah. I have no plans, man. Typical car audio guy. I have no idea what tomorrow is going to hold, let alone 10 years from now. <laughs> so... You know, you'll, I'll be the old guy on YouTube going, all right, guys, listen up, here's what we're going to do. Hey, guys, what's an air pro? I don't know, I heard that crap. Um, so we'll see. All right. Uh, yeah, Angel. Uh, pushing 50, uh, still crawling in cars. <laughs> pushing 50? Yeah, I've already opened the door and walked through it. Look at this it. guy. This is 60. Uh, a lot of Rams tonight. I have a 2022 Ram with a 12-inch factory head unit, Harman card, and speaker system. Can you recommend the best product? To use to add external amplifiers while deleting the factory amp. That's an amp pro, man. Pack audio.com. Type in the numbers. Amp pro. They have the new harness for your car so that you can. Uh, so you need an amp pro and you need the new harness. So make sure you get both and you'll be all set. That'll give you exactly what you need. They make the best Chrysler one. That's, that's just it. I mean, there's. Uh, hold on, let me go back. Uh, hold on. Uh, which bass knob would be better, ACR3 or the, at the DSP or the JL bass knob at the amp? JL bass knob at the amp. I, yes, bass knob at the amp. Uh, I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> I mean, you know, the thing is, is it, it's it, it's a matter of comfort of life. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you uh, think yeah. about it, it's just a matter of comfort of life. I mean. You know, if, if, if every day you go home and you're in pain and you're miserable, then you need to do something else. Now, what that something else is, I don't know. A lot of guys, you know, 
a lot of the guys that I talk to that are up in age, they always go, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go work at tech support. And it's like, just kill me now. Like, yeah, but they look at it as that's, that's where they're gonna graduate to because they have this wealth of knowledge that they've accumulated over the 30, 40 years. And so now it's time to go into tech support and help people out. So it's basically doing this all day long. Um, I don't know, I don't think I could do that. Uh, Dean, it's simple. When you stop installing on a daily basis, you either start a school or you go into the sales side. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're not wrong. In I a mean, wheelchair. You know, or just travel around and film other car stereo shops. That sounds like a really cool idea. But, <laughs> uh, when you get too old, you go work for Kicker. <clears throat> um... You yeah, move to Oklahoma. Oklahoma, man. <laughs> they only have. I think there's there's two people that don't live in Stillwater, Oklahoma. That's it. Oof. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a small town, guys. That's a small town. Hey guys, my 800.1 kicker, blown two comp twelves. Any suggestion on a better subwoofer to handle an amplifier? Um, comp R's. I mean, he has comp R's twelves. Mm. Oh wow. Um. I mean, that's 400 watts of woofer. They really shouldn't be blowing them. I think the reality is, is you want more than they're capable of giving you. So probably you're going to want, yeah, maybe step up to the next, the bigger, you know, maybe go into the uh, the, the bigger woofer they make. I can the never L7? I mean, a set of L7Ts would be spectacular. Yeah, or not just Ts, just that. L7s. Yeah. Like L7Rs would be nice. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah, L7Rs. But it's yeah. still the same motor structure, but it's going to move more air. Um, Q-Class would be good. Just, but, yeah. Oh, Doug Dobson. Here you go. Tech support isn't for everyone. No tech support kidding. is not for everyone. That's yeah, right. You would know, yeah. my friend, and you would know. Um but yeah, if you're if you're blowing like that combination shouldn't yeah, have a CBXs. problem. Yeah, CBXs. Yeah, yeah. CBXs. You can go there still. You want more bass than what they're capable of giving you. Yeah, I I, I think that's part of the problem, because um, like that combo shouldn't there shouldn't you shouldn't have blown woofers. Um, I would also maybe turn these turn the amp yeah. down until you get the right combination for yourself. Stop asking them to do something that they can't do. Because at this point, you're the bad guy here, not Just the Just ask them. It's okay. Um, it's what's do you know any? Do you know of any Amp Pro-like product for a 2019 Chevy GMC truck? Nav TV discontinued theirs. <laughs> and as they say, womp, womp, womp. No, that is the... No, there is nobody making that yet. What's up, Bobby? Uh, it kind of sucks. Uh, because they were like, yeah, it's back out, and then no, it's not. Um, no. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Uh, hey, you know, one day we might get lucky. But right now, that is not the case. Uh, I'd like to thank all our sponsors for the show, uh, MTI Acoustics. Make sure you guys enter to win. It will be next Monday. I promise we'll draw the winner for that. MTI Acoustics. Go like them on Instagram. Take a screenshot, send it to DNF Christmas at yahoo.com. Get entered to win a free box from them. Stage one. Yep. Stage one. Uh, if you're interested in any of the tools that we use to do this show, uh, you can go to DNF Tool Drawer. And if you're interested in the IRTA2, this bad boy right here, that'll take your installation game to the next level, you can pick it up here. If you don't know what we're talking about, for one, it's like, holy crap, you don't know what we're talking about? It's, it's the electrical RTA. Watch the videos that are listed below, and you will become one of the smarter people. This is the ultimate tool, guys. If you guys don't have this, in, if you don't have an electrical RTA or capabilities to do an electrical RTA in your arsenal, you're out of luck. You're out of luck, man, because you're just shooting in the dark. You can't see what is happening over the wires. And it's not voltage in the sense that you can just throw a voltmeter on it and see what the heck is going on. You'd need 32 voltmeters in order to do that. Ooh, figure that one out. Uh, also, if you would like to pick up anything that says five star on it, or I don't know, do you even zip tie, bro? Uh, you can find all the cool shirts that we make at dnfswag.com. That's right, dnfswag.com is the place to go and find that cool stuff. It's Monday. Did I forget anything? No. Well. No? Okay. Uh, as I was saying, thanks to all our sponsors, uh, Audio Control. You can find it at audiocontrol.com. And, of course, uh, Focal. That's going in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Find yeah. them at focal-america.com. America. Is the place to go to find that. You guys are great. 
Make sure to tune into Instagram daily for your daily dose of what the heck is happening here in the install bay. Um, yeah, yeah, there you go. You can order UIRTA there. Look at you, man. I tell you what, you show him how to do stuff on the laptop next thing you know, he just goes crazy. Can touch this. <laughs> uh, we'll be back Saturday. We'll be answering more of your questions. I'll be, Thursday night, I'll be over at the Hi Fi Vega Network doing his show there that we do every week. It is 8 30 Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. We get an hour of nonsensical, the most, I'm sorry, the most. I can't even do it with a straight face. I don't know. Just come over there and watch us. And then if you like to talk about other things other than car audio, check out Side Jag after that on uh, this over Side Jag YouTube Side channel. Jag. Um, where we just talk about stuff that has nothing to do with car audio. It's a fabulous show. Mostly food and movies. Okay. What Sounds more good. do you need in life, right? Why not? Um, I think that's it, guys. We'll be back Saturday. And, of course, you can find us on Instagram. You guys have a great rest of your week. Bye, guys. See ya.